Hi and welcome back to my workshop. Um, I'm Tony and I'm building another tank. This is the M26 Persian tank, as you know, from Armatech. Um, and the last video we installed the torsion bars um, and then we just uh, stuck all the rubber tires to all these wheels, which, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tricky job, but um, I'm glad I've done it. Um, I've checked them all today after a couple of days. Really nicely set um, and I'm pretty happy that they're gonna sort of hold up uh, and uh, last the test of time, shall we say. Um, so um, as you can see, I've gone ahead and uh, done some work. Uh, I've installed the sprocket. I've, this is the left-hand side of the tank. So I've installed the sprocket. I've installed all the track rollers. I've installed the suspension forks or the suspension arms. Um, I've installed the, the, the idler wheel assembly and suspension for this. Um, I've just dry fitted these wheels for now. Just wanted to make sure um, that we align everything and I'll show you how we do that in a moment. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm going to do that and then we'll get to a point where I'll put a couple of these on and then my son will probably speed the rest of it up. So that's the plan for today. I'm going to reset the camera and I'll be back very shortly. Right, so uh, just about ready to go. So a couple of just a couple of tips uh, and advice. So before you start building the or installing the sprocket and any of the wheels, make yourself up a length of track. I've got 25 links here um, so that you can make sure that the sprocket binds perfectly with the track and also when we install the sprocket we're going to put a couple of we're going to put a couple of tank rollers on or track rollers on and uh, dry fit a couple of wheels so that we can make sure that we align the center here with the center line of the wheels so which is um, really really <laughs> um, I mean it's fundamental to make sure that the tank operates as it should now there is um they give you a dimension to offset the sprocket off the drive case of 21 mil um, which is about right I think um, but what's really important um, as well as the 21 mil but probably more important is making sure that when you have these wheels installed on on the, on the, on the tank <laughs> just, just classic as soon as this camera goes on everything goes to pot um, and then when this sprocket is aligned we need to make sure that this center line here which takes the main tooth of the track lines up with the center line of these wheels so as the track comes around it doesn't bind or or clash with this wheel so but i'll show you how we do that um, so that's tip number one so make up about 25 links um, one thing i will say about this set rather than the tiger is um, just on these cotter pins so you have the split pins or cotter pins uh, which you assemble on the end of the track with a washer um, and the cotter pins that they've sent this time round for this are one and a half mil gauge um, and are really hard to bend. Uh, so I've had on the Tiger, they were one mil gauge. So I had a few pins left over um, from the Tiger. And actually, I just think they work better. So I've gone and ordered some more. They're quite, quite inexpensive. Um, I've ordered about 100. So just to make my life a little bit easier because I had a nightmare trying to bend the uh, one and a half mil gauge pins. Not sure why they've done that because the Tiger has been operating for months now and, and I've driven it for hours and hours and hours. No problems at all with the, uh, the, the sort of the split pins that come with that. So again, that's just a, a tip from me. Uh, it may, you will find it, you will make your life easier because you can actually physically bend them easier than a one and a half mil gauge. Crazy to think that half a mil makes that much difference, but it did to me. So that's that. Um, now I'm gonna put this track away for now, because, but it will have its use later on when we uh, come to install the uh, the sprocket. Um, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install some of these suspension arms, these ones here, this, this one here, and this one here, we just take the wheel off of that, make life a little bit easier, pop that over there out of the way. Um, so these two suspension arms here and here. Now when I painted these, um, they, I painted both parts um, and then I had a bit of difficulty just getting it to slide inside. So I just what I did is a bit of wet and dry paper and I just you know just smoothed that off and now they work perfectly. It's almost like a bit of a vacuum the way it works. It's really, I think, maybe by accident or maybe not, but it's ingenious, I think. It's almost like they're gas filled. So really smart. Um, so they're very simple to install. You have these cap fixings here. Um, and these are, I'm just double checking it, M5 cap fixings, the 16 mil. Um, this part here just slides over. To, hopefully you can see that. I might change the angle of the camera in a moment. But anyway, that slides over there. That slides over the top of that. And that's it's aligned. 
um, this then this cap fixing goes in from the back and again you know that now that's on camera it's going to be a royal pain there we go through lovely and then we have a corresponding nut that goes on the end of this so that's going to need some some thread locker now one thing obviously the tank painted the tank really pleased the way the tank looks um, and uh, as I think I said in my previous video I am really considering uh, doing some weathering on this because I think I want as I said before I want to step up the uh, the finishing on this tank away from the um, what I did on the Tiger get the right socket tongue and then just pop that try not to bog the camera sorry guys If already you can see how that works don't know if you can see that try and do this without my arm and away you get that movement on this it's really smart really smart really like that um just put the final nut on here now obviously we've painted all this and now we've got some nuts what have you that are going to be on show not the end of the world at all far from it because what i'm going to do is when you see, for instance, this one here, you can see it's raw metal now, but by the time you pop the wheel on, there we go, see that? Uh, as soon as the camera's on, it all goes horribly wrong. So yeah, as soon as the wheel goes on, you won't even see it. So you don't see it, so don't worry about it. Um, you know, you, 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 just, you can get over concerned and probably overthink it. And even these, I think once the mud guards on and everything else, it's just pointless. Just leave them. They're fine. Um, you know, it's not something that you're going to notice when you're running the tank. So it's no harm done. Um, so that's the first one in and, you know, operating as it should. I really, really like that. Um, so we go to the next one. Exactly the same setup. Push that up out of the way. And in and in again always when this camera comes on it just goes horribly wrong let's have a look that's why it's too much of a vacuum on it clever really clever I wonder if that was a an accident of design We will get this done. You're seeing this in live action. Mistakes and all. There we go. That's it. And again, don't worry if the paint starts flaking off from these fixings. It, it's no hassle or whatever. It doesn't damage or affect the look of the tank. I'll move that strip block it out of the way. Pop that in from behind. Thread lock up. corresponding nut on that I'm not going to over tighten these either I just um, don't feel you need to just, and the thread locker is going to do its job and just test that and you can see hopefully you can see that I love this operation you can see a little bit of the red oxide coming out of it but again i'm not bothered because once the wheels on and everything else and i'm going to be doing some weathering on this anyway so it all goes to um, add to the overall look so those they're done they're nice and easy uh we'll do this one next same deal Actually quite like the fact that you can see a bit of the red oxide I think it adds to it and I might 
might even put some some black weathering on this to make it look like you know grease uh, dirty grease or whatever uh, so some thread I'll put on that I'll change the camera angle when, when we come to do the this all this bit here so you can see this and it really it's incredible as soon as the the torsion bars went on it really started looking like a tank not that I didn't you know I don't think it doesn't look like a tank but you can just start feeling it coming together and um, I guess I just need to start thinking about the next steps for myself and there's various builders out there at all different levels doing various different steps but I'm happy with the I'm happy the way I've approached this and I'm sure there's some I mean because there's a lot of talk on the on the forum about some difficulties with um, with some of these components and and the sort of the next steps and so on and so forth. But you know, I'll um, I mean, there's, a, there's some discussion on the forum about these cleats here that hold these suspension forks, and um, it could be that I end up having to take some of these nuts off. But um, that aside, um, I'm just going to rock on. So I'm just, just going to change the camera so you can see a little bit more detail about how I'm doing this. Right. So that's the camera repositioned. Um, so we have this now, which is our either arm. And if you remember right, we did all the cleaning prior to um, uh, getting this stage and also masked off all this to stop the paint getting in here because you don't want the paint on it. You want metal to metal on that. So that sits in there um, not quite nicely. And if you, if you remember before, we've got a pin that goes through there. The only thing I am going to do um, on this is that there's a bit of paint that's got into that. I'm just going to clean that up. back of it I just want to make sure when this pin goes through it goes through cleanly and you can see it doesn't so we need to do a bit of cleaning up on that it's exactly the same issue that I had with the other side I'm just going to use a circular file just to you want this to be quite loose it's difficult to mask that off when you're painting so you know I wouldn't worry it's just a matter of making sure that the pin goes through I'll just try that still let's have a look It's tight. Yep, it's going to need a bit more work. I'd rather do this now rather than assume it's okay. Just so happens this is the perfect diameter file. It wouldn't be fun building one of these tanks if you didn't have to do all this. No, a little bit more time. Well, it's really important to check these sort of things because imagine trying to do this with the with the idler arm in position like that you'd be scuffing the whole of this you don't want to be doing that that's it perfect that's the kind of you want it nice and loose so that's that Again, no harm done. So that pops into there, and that's nice and easy. It's gone in nice, really nicely. Um, and that comes with a, a flat, what I call a flat nut that goes on the back of that. And again, just you know, follow the instructions. 
I am going to put a bit of Loctite on this, excuse me. I'll tell you what I'll do. Pop that out, I'm going to put that on there. There's this little, little flat wash, a uh, flat nut that goes on the back of that. And the idea is do not tighten these up too much. You've got to let a bit of free movement. So you get that. Don't worry because the, the, um, the thread locker is going to do its job. So you get this spring. So this has got to articulate. And once that thread locker goes off, I'm not even going to put a socket on that because I like the, I like the fact, I like the way it's moving. And that thread locker is going to lock that into position. And that's nice and tight in there anyway. So that's that. Uh, so now we just put, before we lock this into place, place even, uh, we'll put the final suspension arm on. And I really like, the, it's quite, yeah, I love this. It's, when you're building this, you'll probably understand and you'll, you'll feel it. It's just, it's like a, the, the way it suction, it's like a vacuum it creates. So it really feels quite real. Now this is awkward. So not a lot of space to get this in behind. So what you do is you just drop that down using using the suspension system. Uh, hang on a minute. Move that. There we go. And it is going to go, but you have to pull this down. There we go. See, I don't know if you can see that, but that pulls that down. So it allows you to, because you're, you're not going to get that in the back unless you pull this down. So it's, I love, love, love the way Armatech have done this. Um, I'm not saying that these things have got any real function on the tank but they look and operate brilliantly so again hats off to you Armatech love this and let's put this last one on there again I'm not going to go I'm mad tightening these up because I think the thread locker will do its job and I don't think we should have, yeah, you know, I want that free movement and articulation on it. I think if you over tighten these things, it could just probably tend to stop that. That's really smart. Really, really, really like that. So now, final thing is you have one of these uh, larger of these washers. This is the CP0177. Um, it's the, 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 there are more of these, but they're for the wheels. Um, and I'm just going to clean the back of that because there's a little bit, you probably won't see it in the camera, but there's a little bit of machining. Sorry, this is what we're talking about. I forgot to, I've zoomed in. I keep thinking that you can see around corners. So I'm just going to clean the back of that up, just a little bit of, a bit of a sand off so it sits nice and flat and it has a corresponding screw. Or This is a, Just put that, make sure I've got the right tool for that, and I do. Again, just follow the instructions. So I'm not going to tell you all the fixings and everything else, just unless I feel there's a need to. Um, because there are some instructions later on that are a little bit confusing. I don't know why. I think it's I think it might be an error on the um on the instructions. But again, if you if you if you read through these instructions and you just take your time, you can work that out yourself. This has got to have some nice movement in it. You don't want it. I mean, you can you can't. You've got lock tight on, right? So don't over tighten these things because. Again, I've seen some of the guys on the forum, they've said about when they put the wheels on, the wheels are a little bit tight, but um, if you've got lock tight, especially the extreme lock tight, the red one, that's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so. You can see that as it, as it moves, it wants to undo that screw, it's incredible. So that thread lock is doing a vital job. I'll make sure that I haven't got any. Hmm. That's better. 
that's better. It just has to sit inside that washer the right way. No, that's, that's much better. So that is that. Either on, on, suspension's installed. And you see all this, which is bare metal. Don't worry about it because, again, when you've got the wheels on, you don't really see it. So now we're going to go on and do the sprocket. So I'll just reset the camera so you can see the other end of the tank. And we'll set this sprocket up, sprocket up even, and uh, I'll, I'll talk you through that. Right, so almost ready to install the sprocket. But before I do that, I'm going to put one of these tank rollers on up here and that's going to help me locate the track and i'll also dry fit one of the wheels now this is the thing so uh these are fixed with a 20 mil cap fixing an m3 cap fixing and they ask you to pass this through the hole and out to there but if you can see how close that is to the suspension arm um it's, it's it's almost impossible to get a nut onto that and and wind it forward right so um i've gone about a different way um so so i'm i i i just i know the purists out there will probably shout at me but i'm not going to do that i actually found by putting the cap screws through this way i was able to get the nut on the back and wind it up and get it really tight because these have to be on here really tight now again it's not exactly what Armatex say in the instructions, but I don't see any reason why we can't do it, um, especially if I'm going to paint the heads of the cap screws, because I think these possibly will be seen. I don't know yet. I'm going to make a decision on that later on. But in terms of functionality, I don't see any reason why we need to do anything different. Um, sorry, anything other than make your life easy. Um, so this, this one here, this is the one with a thicker, this is the thicker base because we were going through a thinner piece of the hull here. So make sure that you don't get confused and put one of the thinner ones on and you find yourself throwing it out later on uh, down, down the line. So um, I'm going to put this one on first. Again, there's probably people out there shouting at me. Um, but if you're watching Armatech, please forgive me. I just found this is, um, it was impossible, especially if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're like me and you've got massive sausage fingers, um, it, uh, it is a nightmare. Uh, even that is awkward. But at least you can get you can get it in the hole. And that's that there. So I'm just going to hold that. I can see that now. I'm going to just pop my arm on the back of that. The thread locker. I'm only holding holding the fixing in. I can't actually get into the head of it, but it should allow me enough pressure to to wind this nut on. And um, here we go. Camera on. Difficulties. Now by holding that, I can tighten that up from the inside. I just don't know how you'd get, you know, a socket on the end of this with, with these wheels in the way. I just don't know how you do it. So uh, this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, you know, unless I live to regret it, I'm not, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be able to do this. This is why we'll, uh, when we get to that point, my son will speed all this up because this bit is monotonous only because there's so many of them to do. Um, and I think I said in my last video, I'm, I'm so happy that we're getting to the end of this, you know, multiple um, installations. So you're talking about 14 wheels, build 14 identical wheels. Uh, 10 identical tank you know track rollers bogies um the whole shebang now we're just getting into the really enjoyable bit um i'm sure there's more challenging and tedious things to come but that's all part of it 
I say tedious, I don't mean it like that, Armatec, forgive me, but you know, sometimes some of these things, like the tracks, for instance, that's tedious. And anybody that says that it isn't, um, sorry, it is. Just need to undo that a little bit. And I think there's 164 links or something like that. Um, just doing 25 of them was uh, challenging. But like I said before, um, you can, you get into a rhythm. And I said, I think if, I, if I'm, if I'm going to go down the route of a slightly thinner gauge um, cotter pin, life will be a little bit easier for me. I have no idea what that does. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I've made that decision. And the executive decision, two executive decisions in one day. How about that? So we've got the changing the gauge of the cotter pins and putting the, uh, the fixings in an alternative way for Armatex say. I mean, this is awkward, but I can't imagine how more awkward it would be doing it the other way. And so anybody who's done it as Armatex suggests, you know, fair play to you guys. So I'm just going to get one of these on. Just going to help me guide, guide the, um, the position of the sprocket. It's like really has, really has transformed in the last couple of sessions. It's beginning to feel like a tank. Um, I am tempted, once I've got the cotter pins, to assemble the track completely, fit it, and then just do a, a rolling test with it, just to make sure that everything is operating as it should. So that's probably the next thing. But I probably won't film the track assembly because I did all that on the Tiger, and there's not much difference, really. Only making sure that the, don't forget that the cotter pins are on the outside, not the inside of the tank. Uh, so it's on, on the outside face of the tank not on the inside but other than that it's really straightforward they don't really give you that much direction on the on the instructions either because it is reasonably straightforward but as i said there's 164 of them to do on 25 done i've got a balance of those to do um i've still got some cotter pins left from the tiger so i've probably got enough to do i've got enough to do it what i want to do uh, especially with the ones that are on this way so anyway that's in nice and tight spinning nicely so that's going to help me when i come to position the sprocket but also what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dry fit a wheel and that's going to so i'm looking now you can't see this off the camera but i'm looking so uh trying to sort of use something as a sort of demonstrator um i'm looking down the line of that and i can see that they're perfect perfectly aligned and you know i wouldn't expect anything other because you know it can only go in one position so what we need to make sure is the sprocket lines up exactly the same way. So here we go. The dreaded taper lock um, installation. I always get worried when I do these. I don't know why, because they're actually reasonably straightforward. Having said that, again, okay, yeah, the camera's on now, so this is all going to go wonky. So we have a, on the, uh, on the, uh, the main drive axle here, we have a slot um, and we have a key that just slides into that now. It, that's a nice tight fit sometimes um i didn't have it on this but on the tiger i just have to file away that sort of section there to allow this to slide it should be a nice snug fit um yeah so that's pretty much where it should be that's the first thing the key then we have the sprocket itself so i'm trying to do this inside the camera and this is the side that you install the taper lock not this side so this side has got three uh, three areas Two of them are threaded, one's not. Uh, this one here, I understand, is when you want to remove it, you there's a the, you, you basically thread something in here and then that pops the taper lock out, but I don't have any intentions of removing that. So this is it. So we unpack the taper lock. One thing we must do is make sure this is absolutely spotlessly clean. Same for this. Because a lot of this is to do with um, friction fit. 
So if there's any grease or anything on that, it could affect how the table block works. So on, op on opening the bag, we have the table lock. We have two threaded, see if I can show you that, whoop. I'm doing this on camera, is really awkward. Two threaded grub screws here. I'm just gonna clean this so there's no grease or anything like that. Obviously that fits over that, if you like. So that's what this key does. It just has a little slot. And you see that on the camera, there's a little slot there that that key locks into. And that's what obviously keeps, uh, locks the sprocket and spins the whole thing around and makes it just uh, amazing. So with the taper lock, I've just got it on my finger here as you can see I'm going to position that and the right position for this is this kind of arrangement here so you've got let me just spin that around so you've got the threaded grub screws go either side of that let me just make sure it's on the camera either side of that and that's what crunches or, or tightens the taper onto the drive shaft here and does its incredible job. Um, so that's it. And I'm just going to push that forward ever so slightly. And I'm going to, hopefully with a prevailing wind, position that. Again, camera on. Awkward. Oh, there we go. So that's it. Roughly in position. Just make sure I've got to line up these holes as they should be. And there they are. Hope you can see that. Let me just move that. Just move this camera in a little bit more. Hopefully that's a bit better. Um, now they say that it should be 21 mil off the drive case, which is fine. What I've done here is I've just cut a little piece of metal tube, which is exactly 21 mil. That's just, it's, only, it's not the be all and end all. It just gives me a bit of a gauge so I can tell more or less that that's more or less the position but the most important thing and I'm now lining this through is that it is a dead center and um, and that is what the optimum requirement is so that's that we're all pretty much all set so we've got these two grub screws and they just load up the driver now they need to be a little bit of grease on them. I'll just put a little bit of grease. I'll go mad with it. And they go either side. I'm not gonna put them in tight. They have to be almost simultaneously installed. Just a little bit of grease on this one. Only the fourth ever one I've ever done, and I don't know why. I just feel so nervous doing them. I guess it's just a thing, right? So, a couple of things I'm going to do here. One, just going to make sure that that is 21 mil, and it's just across the back of that. So that's going to hold that there. Tight. Just tighten these up gradually either side. Do them similar. My little gauge is gone. That's still, still more or less where it wants to be. You're going to feel this is all loose and doesn't feel right initially. But it will start tightening up very quickly indeed. Now, sometimes you need to bash this with a with a with a mallet, if you like, so that this taper sort of does its job. But it's driving it in where it wants to take it anyway, so it's looking about right. 
just ever so gently tighten these up either side and you'll find that as they tighten you do the next side it loosens off again it's absolutely essential that this runs true before I go any further I'm just going to spin that I'm looking down the line of it and it looks like it's spinning beautiful right so now this is where the test fit track comes in so that's in the teeth of the track roller and I'm going to move that round and I can see that that sits beautiful beautifully in the in the line of the wheel as well dead center so right so happy with that I can go away and we'll just do some more tightening up on this it get that and my knocking stick just making sure that's it's spinning and you know nice just eyeing it in is good enough and it's per is running true and perfect um, I'm just gonna use my where is that where did I put that oh there it is just to see Hmm. yeah that runs really well so continuing to tighten that up now and they do suggest once you've had the tank running for a while take the hub cap off just check everything's still tight in case it's worked itself loose so that's something I definitely did with the Tiger and uh, in fact there was no problems at all it was tight as anything hadn't moved at all I probably will check it again after multiple years but that is beautiful really pleased with that so you can see it's actually reasonably straightforward um, and it's like I don't know it seems to be like some kind of uh, mis mystery behind putting these in but I don't think there is I think the Armatec instructions are quite clear I think the thought of it is probably worse than the actual practice of doing it um, and just again take your time and make sure you don't rush anything because this particular part is quite an essential thing you don't want to see these things spin off when you're driving the tank at whatever speed you're driving the tank at so that's it that's that and the only other thing I'm going to do with this now just for now is um, pop the hub cap on uh, now, oh, sorry, I should say, um, and I will do this before I operate it. Um, they do ask you to fill this with either silicon or grease uh, in case the dirt gets in, which is a good idea, but I'm not going to do that just yet. And just in case, for some reason, I've got to take it off. And I'm just going to put this on loosely for now. Uh, I don't want to put any thread locker on that at this stage because I might need to take it off. I'm just doing it by hand. So that's it that's as easy as that um, so now I'm going to go on and I'm just going to put the rest of these uh, track rollers on I'll move the camera out so you can see that and um, I'll probably get Ben to speed the whole thing up for that and I'll come back to camera at the end So that's it for today um, it really feels like the tanks moved on a bit uh, none of you agree uh, so today just to recap we uh, installed the sprocket and showed you how you do the taper lock we installed all the tank rollers um, we finished off all the suspension and the idler arm and I've just dry fitted the wheels for now because um, I'm not quite sure 
whether I need to secure them or not before I put the mud guards on. So I've got a bit of thinking to do about my next stage. Um, as all the builders, I guess, that are building this particular tank um, have been through the same or similar journey. Um, I'm also thinking about sort of getting some of the bins out, um, the, the storage bins, getting those built, painted, uh, installed onto the mud guards, um, and doing as much as I possibly can around the tank ahead of doing anything on top of the tank. Because I'm probably going to have to order the motion pack so I can get the main gear drives installed before I close the hull off. Because... I think, unlike the Tiger, this tank um, doesn't lend itself, I might be wrong, but doesn't lend itself easily to accessing to do the installation of the motors at the back here. Um, so lots to think about. Um, but in the interim, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off doing these tracks um, and I will uh, install them, temporarily install the wheels and then just do a bench test, a rolling bench test, just to make sure the whole thing's operating as it should. And then... Uh, who knows what the next step's going to be, but by the time you see me again, I'd have made my mind up and uh, we'd have a plan. Um, but anyway, thanks for joining me again. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, if you like this, thumbs up. And uh, again, thank you all for all of your amazing support, your amazing comments. It really means a great deal to me. Um, and I'll see you really soon. Thank you.